For this walkthrough, we'll be demonstrating Kong Gateway with the Key Authentication plugin. We'll demo a basic use case for the plugin as we place Kong Gateway in front of a simple API server with a single endpoint. We'll configure the Key Auth plugin to restrict access to that endpoint, requiring that requests include a valid API key in the header. To get started, we're going to build a simple API server with a single endpoint using Node.js and Express. In a terminal, we'll create a folder for our project. Then, in our project folder, we'll run yarn init to initialize a new project. We can accept all of the defaults. Next, we'll add the express package, which is the only package we'll need for our project. And with our project initialized, we need to open and edit a single file, index.js. In that file, we're going to require express, instantiate a new server. We'll be listening on port 3000. And our server is going to be listening for get requests on the slash, that's the root path. It's going to log the request headers and then send out a simple 200 OK message, hello world. We set up our server to listen. And we save our file. And then we run node index.js to start our server. Now that our server is running, we open a browser window just to test it. We're going to visit localhost 3000. And there we see hello world. That looks good. And back in our terminal running the express server, we see how the request headers were logged. There they are. All right, we're all set. We're going to leave this terminal running in the background while we do our work in other windows. Next, we'll need to install Kong Gateway. Installation steps will differ depending on your local machine and development environment, so feel free to pause the video here to install Kong on your system, and then rejoin us when you're ready. Because our key auth plugin will need to manage API keys, Kong will need to read and write to a database. The simplest setup will be to run a PostgreSQL database on your machine, and we'll need to do a few things to set up a database for Kong to use. So in a separate terminal, log into the database as the root user. On my machine, that's Postgres user. First, we want to create a Kong user in PostgreSQL. Our user's name will be Kong, and his password will be Kong. Next, we're going to create a database called Kong, and we will set our Kong user to be the owner of that database. Now our database is ready for Kong to use. When Kong starts up, it uses a configuration file for its settings. This file is located in slash etc slash Kong. Upon install, Kong provided you with a template called kong.conf.default. We're going to copy that file to a new file, calling it kong.conf. This is the file that Kong will look to when starting up. Now we'll edit this file. Really, the only thing about this configuration file that we need to modify has to do with the database settings. This is around line 922. There are a few lines there that we need to uncomment and set. For database, we're going to uncomment that and set it to Postgres. We want to uncomment the lines for host, port, and timeout, keep those as they are. And then we need the user, password, and database. And remember to set the password also as Kong, because that's what we set in PostgreSQL. And that's it. We're going to save this file. With our Kong configuration set, we need to let Kong bootstrap the database that it now has access to. We run Kong Migrations Bootstrap to do that. And now the database is all ready for Kong to use. And we start up Kong Gateway.
Now that Kong is up and running, we want to tell Kong to sit in front of our upstream service, the Node.js API server we created. To do that, we'll send a POST request to the Kong admin API that's listening on port 8001. We'll use Insomnia to do this. We'll send a POST request to localhost port 8001. That request is going to go to the services endpoint. In the body of this request, which will be JSON, we will provide a name for our service. And we'll provide a URL where the service is found. In our case, that's localhost 3000. We send that request and our service has been created. Next, we need to add a route. Kong will listen for requests to a certain path, and then it will forward those requests on to our upstream service. This time, we'll send a post request to the routes endpoint. For our JSON body, we'll provide a name for our route, And we'll associate it with the service that we just created by providing the name of that service. And then we'll provide a list of paths that Kong should listen in, listen on for forwarding to that service. We just have one path slash API. We send that request. and our route has been created. Now that we've configured Kong to listen on the API path, requests to that route will forward to our API server on port 3000. To test this out, we'll go to our browser. This time, instead of visiting port 3000, we'll visit the port that Kong Gateway listens on, port 8000, and we'll visit the path that we configured, slash API. Great, it looks like Kong Gateway is successfully sitting in front of our upstream API server. Next, we want to add the key authentication plugin, associating it with the API route that we just created. When Kong gets requests to that path, the plugin will look for a valid API key before Kong forwards that request on to the upstream service. To configure our plugin, we'll send another post request to Kong's admin API. This request goes to the plugins endpoint. For the JSON body, we need to include a few pieces of data. First, we will provide the name of the plugin, which is key auth. This is not an arbitrary name, like when we chose a name for our service or route. The value here, key auth, is specific to Kong and refers to the key authentication plugin. Next, we add a few configurations. We're gonna set the name of the data key that Kong should look for when trying to find the API key. We'll have Kong look for the API key in XAPI key. Next, we'll tell the plugin where it should search for that XAPI key. We'll tell Kong that the key is going to be in the header by setting key in header to true. We'll set key in query to false and key in body as false. Lastly, we'll associate the plugin with the route that we just created. and then we send our request. And our plugin has been created. Now, let's go back to our browser and we'll send our request to that API route again. And we see no API key found in request. So our key auth plugin is working and Kong will not forward our request on to the upstream service because we haven't provided a valid API key. Just to see a bit more information, let's try to hit our API path in Insomnia. We'll send a GET request to localhost port 8000 to the API route. We send that request, and there we see a 401 unauthorized response with no API key found in request. Remember, the plugin is looking in the header for X API key. So let's set a random value in that header and see what the response looks like. We'll go to headers, we're gonna add X API key. 
And we'll just add in a random string as our API key. And we'll send that request. And again, we get a 401 unauthorized, but this time we get invalid authentication credentials. So it looks like the plugin detected that there was some sort of value provided in the X API key header. It just wasn't a valid API key. Now that our plugin is up and running, we need to create a valid API key so that our requests can get through successfully. In Kong, an API key is a type of credential, and a credential is associated with a consumer. So first, we'll create a consumer, which for our example, represents a user who wants to access our API server. We create the consumer first, and then we create a credential, an API key, for that consumer. To create a consumer, we send another post request to Kong's admin API. We send a request to the consumer's endpoint route, the only information we need in that JSON body is a unique username to associate with this consumer. We send that request. And now we have a consumer. Now that we have a consumer, we'll create an API key for him. To do this, we send a simple post request to the admin API again, but the path this time is slash consumers slash our consumer's username, and then slash key dash auth. This will create a credential that is associated with the key auth plugin. That's our API key. This request doesn't need any body. We send that request. And there in the response, we see key. That is our API key. We're gonna copy that because we're gonna use that in just a second. Now, we'll try again with that get request to our API route. We're gonna create a get request to localhost port 8000 slash API. And this time, we will add our X API key header and we'll paste in the valid API key that we just generated for our consumer. And we send that request. And it looks like it went through. We see the 200 okay response with hello world. The key authentication plugin looked for a value in the X API key header. It found a value, validated that key in the database, and then it told Kong Gateway to go ahead and forward that request on to the upstream service. With that successful request, let's take a look at our original terminal window that had our express server running. You'll recall that we were logging request headers. Now, when we look at the headers that were logged with the most recent request, you see these additional headers, which were not there before. We see X API key, which is the API key that we provided, but the key auth plugin also wrote some more data to the upstream headers. We have the consumer ID and the consumer username, and we also have the credential identifier, which is the ID associated with our API key credential. And that wraps up our walkthrough, where we demonstrated Kong Gateway with a key authentication plugin, sitting in front of a simple API server with a single endpoint, protecting that route, and requiring a valid API key before requests get forwarded on. Thank you for joining us.